Hey guys, uh, so it's uh, a Saturday and Anne is going into Los Angeles with a bunch of her girlfriends to do a Squid Game experience uh, thing they got out there. So as I do a couple times a month, I'm gonna go out and play some poker today. And it's about an hour, 10 minute drive to the casino I'm going to. Today I'm gonna go to Agua Caliente. When I play poker, I'll either go to uh, the Bike Casino, Hustler Casino, uh, Morongo, uh, Lake Elsinore, or Agua Caliente out in Palm Springs, and that's what I'm going to do today. And since I'm doing that, and I got a long drive, I figured I'll take some time to answer some questions that you guys sent in to me on the community tab. I got my phone all set up that it can dictate the questions to me, so I don't have to take my eyes off the road to hear questions. And uh, safety first. And uh, yeah, let's get to it. So the first one came to us, if I heard it right, from Cinereal Talk, who basically was asking me, how do I feel about the format of the channel now with all the changes that I made this year? Am I finding a better work-life balance and, and all that kind of stuff? So just a, a little bit of background to that. You know, I made a bunch of changes earlier in the year um, that really amounted to cutting back a lot because I've gone five, six years straight of working like 12, 13, 14, 15 hour days. And while I have an incredibly supportive wife, um, even to her, that was getting kind of unreasonable and how much I was working and stuff like that. And the reality is, I always said when I started my own channel that what I didn't want to do um, was create a AMC Movie Talk 2.0. You know what I mean? Like I didn't want to uh, do Collider Movie Talk 2.0, but you know, you you start building and you start growing and you feel the need, and, and I fell to this too, you feel the need to continually grow, do more growing, expand, 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 get bigger and bigger and bigger. And all of a sudden I had tons of staff and we were making like in some, some days, three different shows a day, um, like all this kind of stuff. And I just realized like, all of this is counterintuitive to really the way um, I want my channel to be and how I want to function. And so I also started realizing that, pardon me, that, you know, a lot of our extra shows, like we had the main John Campia show, but then we had all these other shows we were doing too. And I just realized, you know what, for the expense and cost that it's costing me to make this in money, in time, um, in resources and in effort, we're, we're just not, those shows aren't getting enough views and they're not making enough money to justify all this extra hours and effort and money and dollars that are going into it. And so I made a decision that I was going to start, we were going to cut back. Um, and we did. And now to this day, like we really only do the John Campia show now. And then, you know, a couple of times a week, I will on my own do open mics, which I, I enjoy doing open mics, which are really good. Interstate 50, but um, ever since doing that and making those changes, it made it possible for us to do live again. That and YouTube assured me they were reprioritizing live. So yeah, I, I think right now I'm working a lot less than I used to. We're making a lot less content than we did, but it's made my life better. It's made my wife's life better. And, uh, and yeah, so right now I'm, I'm pretty happy. I, actually, I might not even be done with the downscaling yet, but, uh, that'll be, uh, in the new year. Okay. The next one, it had a hard time reading. G. Candelario, I think is what it said. And basically what G. Candelario was asking was, do I think the next Spider-Man movie, uh, not Spider-Verse animated movie, but live action will be as big as No Way Home if, uh, Andrew Garfield and Tobey Maguire aren't in it? And do I think that if they put Daredevil in it instead, that could make up for it? Okay. So, no, I don't think the next Spider-Man movie will be as big as Spider-Man No Way Home. I mean, that thing was lightning in a bottle. And <clears throat> it's not like it was just a modestly successful film, right? Spider-Man No Way Home almost made $2, two billion. Um, so... To expect that the next one can be as big, I don't think so. Plus, you know, the novelty now of Andrew Garfield and Tobey Maguire appearing in them, you can only do that 
once. I, what, what I mean by you can only do that once is you can only do the novelty of it, like for the first time ever, boom. You can only do the first time ever once. And now it's been done. And it was a great movie and, and all that kind of stuff. So whether Andrew and Toby were in it or not, I don't think the next Spider-Man movie will make $2 billion, right? It's still going to be insanely successful for sure. Um, now, about the Daredevil thing, the reality is Daredevil has no box office track record. Like, I don't think, ooh, saying Daredevil's in the movie is going to add $400 million to the box office total. Daredevil was a Netflix character. Um, a, a well-loved Netflix character. You know how much I loved Daredevil. But no. So basically, the answer to the question of do I think that the next Spider-Man movie, with or without Toby and Andrew, will that make nearly two billion dollars no i don't think so but i think it'll be extremely successful i can't wait to see it all right the next one comes to us from the tyler lake who wrote what are the three things that i think disney needs to do to get back on track um so there are three very important things that i think disney needs to do to get back on track i, I assume you mean talking about the movies <clears throat> one make better movies two make better movies and three you guessed it make better movies i mean look <clears throat> winning cures everything right the the problem is they haven't made quality films i mean that's that's the result i mean they've made some quality stuff yes some really high quality stuff yes but they've also made a much higher percentage of mediocre or bad stuff than they ever used to before. Now, we can get into, well, then what are the three things they need to do to make better films? Well, I already think they've done the main one, which is put the power of creation back into the hands of the creative people. You know, one of the things Bob Chapek did when he came in was he took all the authority away from the creative people, and he put all the authority into the hands of the business people including Kevin Feige. They took a ton of Kevin Feige's power away. They took away a lot of his decision-making authority. So that's the, the one big thing. Uh, so they're already doing that. The second thing they need to do, which they're already doing, is slow down how much content they're creating, right? That's one of the other things. You can't have 12 projects on the go at once. And so one of the things that Bob Iger said when they got right back in was, we are going to slow down the amount of content that we're putting out there, which is great. And then the third thing they need to do is something that they always used to do, which is stick to your plan. Um, it's okay if you hit a road bump here or there, but stick to the plan. So two out of the three things they've already done, um, and it's good to see, and I think those are going to have positive results. And uh, who knows? We'll find out in 2025, I suppose. All right, so the next one comes to us from Losser with Socks, uh, who was asking that they're saying that, hey, they're a night owl. Uh, they would love to be able to go to a movie at like 1 a.m. in the morning. And what do I think are the chances of them maybe having like a 24-hour movie theater and that that could be good for maybe a lot of people who don't work 9-to-5 jobs? It's a great question. And listen, for me personally, there have been many times that I've been up late at night thinking that, man, you know what would be great? Just run to a movie right now and it's like 2.30 in the morning or something. But I don't really see that becoming a reality like i i can see and i wouldn't be surprised if a couple of theaters do exist that say run 24 hours but you're never going to see it on any kind of a regular scale thing here's why simply not enough people go to movies really late right there's just not enough and just having movie theaters open costs a ludicrous amount of money like huge amounts of money just to turn the lights on, have the projectors going, have the popcorn makers fired up, having staff that you got to pay on an hourly basis just for being there. I, I just don't know that there's a business case that you can make that, especially like for a big theater, like say the AMC Burbank 16 or something, that it's a big place. It, it costs a lot just to have that place open and up and running. Not to, again, all the staff and everything. And I just don't think there'd be enough people going to those 2 a.m. screenings, uh, I got a feeling a lot of the times it would just be you and me sitting in there. Um, but yeah, so for that reason, 
I really don't think we're, we're gonna see that become any kind of a regular reality. Okay, so I'm here at Agua now, uh, sitting down to play some poker. I'll, I'll answer some questions in between hands too. So uh, I'm gonna eventually end up at the 2-5 game, but uh, they don't have a seat right now, so I'm starting at the smaller table, the 1-3. I'm gonna buy in for about, uh, or I did buy in for about $300. Uh, in my like second hand, I won an all in and got up to like $600. Mm -hmm. uh, then about five minutes later, I got up to about $700. Um, and they're gonna, hopefully soon I'll be moved over to the 2-5 game. But uh, yeah, so far, so good. Okay, so uh, Mike Vetter writes and is asking, in 20 years, who do I think Pedro Pascal will be better known for? For playing Joel in The Last of Us or playing The Mandalorian? Um, I, I actually don't think it's close. I think it's Joel in The Last of Us for a couple of reasons. Number one, I mean, you hardly ever saw Pedro Pascal in The Mandalorian, right? Like you heard his voice all the time, but you hardly ever saw him. Number two, The Last of Us is the better show. I mean, that's subjective, obviously, but I mean, for me, I think it's the better show. We haven't even seen season two. So, and like, he's getting like Emmy nominations for playing that in The Last of Us. Now, listen, we still have more to see of The Mandalorian, whether there's going to be a Mandalorian season four or uh, in Dave Filoni's Mandalorian verse movie. And we're going to see more of Pedro Pascal in The Last of Us, but yeah, right now I think it's going to be uh, Last of Us. All right, so uh, Hung Yu is asking, is the A6400, the Sony A6400, still a good camera to get, or is there another camera you'd recommend in the same price range? This is a great question. I've been using the Sony A6400s ever since I started the John Campion YouTube channel. They're really good. I like them a lot. But they're you're probably looking at paying, like, without the lens, like, without getting a good prime lens, like, well over $1,000. Um, whereas there's another kind of camera I've been using lately too, called the Canon uh, M50 Mark II. Canon M50 Mark II. So right now in the studio, we use a mix of the Sony A6400s and the Canon M50 Mark IIs. And the nice thing is the Canons are about $300 cheaper and Sigma makes their prime lenses, the same ones they make for the A6400, they make them for the mounts on the Canon. So I would actually recommend the Canon M50 Mark IIs right now. Hope that helps. Okay, so it's uh, going pretty well. I'm currently up to about 1,800 in front of me, which is which is pretty good. Uh, so right now I'm taking a short dinner break. I'm gonna go over to the sports bar here and grab something to eat and I'll uh, answer a few more questions. Okay, so Stephen C. is asking me uh, that even though he's asked me before, how much longer am I planning on doing YouTube? Well, um, I've said before, and it's still the plan, that I'm going to retire at least from YouTube in sometime in 2025. Uh, probably after Superman Legacy comes out, maybe Christmas of 2025, I'm not sure yet, but that's when I'm kind of aiming to retire from YouTube. Now, after I do that, I'll probably still podcast, you know, because I could just do that from a quiet camper trailer somewhere or travel and do it. But uh, yeah, probably gonna retire from YouTubing sometime in 2025. Well, it's now uh, about 12.30, almost one o'clock in the morning. The last couple of hours of the game did not go as well as the first couple of hours. I think at one point, I peaked up around 1900 bucks. Uh, I lost a couple of big hands and I ended up around 12. So I bought in for three, um, cashed out with 12. So made around 900 bucks tonight. So, I mean, which is good. It's just that I, I was on a real roll the first part of the evening. And now for the long drive back home.